welcome, welcome. This is the Deuce Sports Show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm yours truly, Alvin's Deuce. It's great to be back. It's great to be back. And um, let's get right into it, man. Um, I'm here to, to talk about what we got going on, man. We just The Super Bowl just ended last week. Um, just wanted to bring my... Uh, my parting thoughts of, of the whole situation, of the whole um, results. Um, congratulations to Patrick Mahomes. Congratulations to Eric um, Eric Reed. Um, three Super Bowls, man. Um, I mean, uh, what can you say? Um, three Super Bowls in, in, in a short period of time. Um, that's just amazing. That's a great f- accomplishment, um, for, um, the Kansas City Chiefs. They have instantaneous, inst- instantaneously become, um, a marquee, became, have become a marquee franchise in the industry. Um, shouts out to Travis Kelsey. You know, um, still doing his thing. Um, let's get into it, man. I mean, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, watching this, uh, this game. Um, I'm a Dolphin fan. I follow the Dolphins, so of course, you know, I would have wanted the Dolphins to be part of um of the Super Bowl. They didn't, you know, make it one and done. Um, still waiting for that one playoff win and, um, in 20 something odd years, I still haven't witnessed a playoff game, um, since I've started following the Dolphins, but Hey, you know, one day, right? A man can hope. Look at Detroit. Detroit didn't have a playoff win in years in 50 years. If I'm not mistaken, you got generations of kids and adults that did not witness a playoff win. Um, people pour- crying and tears coming down their eyes. Not only did they win one playoff game, but they ended up winning two playoff games. Two playoff games in 50-plus years, man. Let's just hope that the Dolphins don't get to that point. I mean, that, that would be that would be crazy. But Kansas City, they've done their thing. Um, but, but in this game, I actually wanted San Francisco to get this win. I feel like, in my opinion, I feel like um, Kyle Shanahan is due. Um, I feel like, you know, he's had multiple cracks at the Super Bowl now. One time with Atlanta as an offensive coordinator. Another time, um, a couple of years back with Jimmy Garoppolo. And now, this time with Brock Purdy. Um, and close with no cigar. Um my instant thoughts on how it went, me personally, um, see, San Francisco played a great game. Played They played Kansas City great. Um, and it was a tough back and forth um, battle. Two physical teams. Um, that's what the Dolphins is lacking. Dolphins is lacking physicality on the line of scrimmage. But these two teams were marquee. Their marquee signatures was, was their physicality in the line of um on the line of scrimmage um and you know shouts out to seattle i mean san francisco um with giving um making uh kansas city work for it there's some just some things that um i want to point out that i just was kind of like man if this didn't happen you know things probably the pendulum would have swung a different way and um in my opinion, um, I'm sorry, bro, but it's like when we when we watch these, like especially Kansas City, like, like you can you you get to a point where you you like the story. They become the, they be, they win the Super Bowl, then they win the second one. That Cinderella eventually turns into a a a villain. And and I hate that. I hate to say that, but 
after a while you kind of get like Kansas like you kind of get a fatigue right your your mind says like okay Kansas City won two now all right let somebody else win for a change so there was a lot more people now rooting for San Francisco who haven't won one for a, won one in a long time and now there's a lot also was a lot of there's a lot of people rooting for Kyle Shanahan for him to get his first ring right he's been close multiple times and every a lot of people would want, would have wanted San Francisco to get a, a championship for the first time in a long time since the Jerry Rice Jerry Rice days, and um, in my opinion, you know that's why I kind of wanted San Francisco. To win. But there was something that I st- when I start to realize when it comes to these teams, when it comes to these teams that are you know catch genie in the bottle and becomes like instantly a many dynasty within the next two, three years or whatnot. It's like, there's this thing that people say, oh, it's a script. It's a script. Oh, this was, this was a script, right? I don't really look at it that way, but when it, when it comes to these, these teams, um, these teams for some reason get, start to get these fortuitous bounces, fortuitous um situations that happen throughout a game like it, and 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 it starts to happen a lot more often than you would expect to the point where you 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 get to a point where you start thinking about conspiracies you start thinking about man what's going on why is this um why do they continually get the, get the fortuitous bounce why do they continually get let's just flat out say get lucky you know what i'm saying and in my opinion i feel like this is another situation that happened last night with Kansas City. I mean, not last night, but when the Super Bowl happened a week ago with Kansas City. Kansas City flat out got lucky. And the reason why I say they got lucky, and I'm telling you right now, they were playing a great game. San Francisco was was playing a great field position game as well. The punter was balling to the point where he he was probably could have been considered the MVP candidate um the punter he was pinning them down within the 20 yard lines and whatnot it was amazing so with my in my opinion like this is what caused um Kansas City to win this game Kansas City could not go down the field could not score they scored only one field goal, and even that field goal was lucky. Who would have thunk a kicker was named Butkus to kick a 57-yard field goal in the humidity on with the immense pressure on him in the Super Bowl, 57 yards? I for sure thought he was going to miss that field goal. That's one. That's one lucky occurrence. That's three points. We stop. I mean, I said we. San Francisco stop Kansas City. Right? And they we caused them to punt the ball. I said we again. San Francisco caused them to punt the ball. And Kansas City punt the ball. And if I'm not mistaken, if it was Jennings that was back there, I don't remember. But this ball, he and it hits the ankle of a player who was trying to block a gunner. I don't understand. Like, and and the ang- it hits the, it, it gently hits the ankle. The football hits the ankle. Of a of a San Francisco 49er. The man don't even know what's going on. And now, granted, the person who was receiving the punt, he should have just tried to jump on it and not try to grab it and run. Right? But when that happened, it flipped the game, man. Because Kansas City was struggling to go down the field. Then they throw they hit they hit a punt and it was a booming punt. And within an instant. Kansas City's literally just running down the field 
with a short field, and then within a couple of plays, touchdown. Right? Ten lucky points. Ten points. The fortuitous. That's all I could think of. The word of it. It's just it's just fortuitous. Like it's fortunate. Like like the fortunate kick. The fort the the the, the fortuitous uh, uh a bounce that hit a uh, ankle of the San Francisco 49ers and then that just swung the game. Now Kansas City's back in the game with 10 points. 10 huge points in a Super Bowl where every inch, every play is scrutinized. Every play is examined. Every man, oh my god. I've never seen something that that so that luck like it's luck like, and it's like man, that that that, it's it's just wild to me, man. It's wild to me that that happened in the Super Bowl, man. And moving forward, granted, the onus was on Kyle Shanahan, man. Kyle Shanahan, in the Within the game, there was some stretches where you didn't even want you you started to to abandon the, the run, and I kept hearing Tony Romo on the telecast saying, "Run the ball, run the ball." He's like, so he started to get agitated to the point where it's like, "Bro, why are you not running the ball?" Then after a while, you started getting back to running the ball, and that's when Tony Romo was like, "Finally, yes, he's running the ball, All right?" And I'm like, "Man, like." Like, then they get to a point where they're stagnant, and they can't like, they can't uh uh um, you know, muster up any offense. Big ups to Steve Spagnola. I for whatever reason I don't understand it how Steve Spagnola does not have a head coaching a second chance at a head coaching job. How is that possible? That he. He's clearly, he's clearly the best defensive coordinator in the league. He's clearly the best defensive coordinator in the league right now. And after that Super Bowl, after that win, it was stamped. It was stamped, right? Everybody in the world, everybody, they seen it. They're like, okay, yeah. It's confirmed. He's the best defensive coordinator in the league. And why is he not getting another head coaching job? Why is he not getting another head coaching opportunity? I don't understand. Eric Reed, he's loving it because he's like, damn, I get to keep my defensive coordinator year in and year out. So now just it's just me and him. We got cohesion. We have a, a camaraderie. We have a relationship. And we could keep this thing going. Speaking of cohesion, speaking of camaraderie, right? There's a lot of stuff going on right now and a lot of chatter going on right now with Steve Wilkes, right? Steve Wilkes, if not, if you don't know, if you happen to hear this, um, hear this or just now hearing this, Steve Wilkes is fired. Steve Wilkes is gone. He has been fired by the San Francisco 49ers. And I don't understand it. Why? Why was Steve Wilkes fired? He did everything he can do to keep San Francisco in the game. Right? I don't understand. Why, like, he got fired after doing a good job in the Super Bowl, holding them to 19 points, holding them to, um, uh, what was it? Uh, holding them to, to, if I'm not mistaken, 13, 12, or what was it 13 points, um, in the in regulation? The Kansas City 49ers, I mean, Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. Two-time Super Bowl, 
winner. And and it's crazy. The reason why I bring up camaraderie, it, it seems like Kyle Shanahan did and, and and the NFL is starting to get to that point where it's relationships, man. It's relationships. Right? It's relationships. Everything's relation. Most of these head coaching jobs are connected through relationships. You fire Mike Vrabel and you bring in you bring in um the Callahan fella. And it just so happens to the GM and Canada and, and that head coach has history together. It's relationship. They have a relationship. NFL is becoming to a, is has become a point where it's just it's relationships, man, and and and, and relationships and, and, and nepotism. And quite frankly, that's how everything is is and and it's starting to be period in this world. So it's like the person that don't have um a relationship with somebody or with this with, with a person or and, and and just trying to make it just off of just work ethic. Man, this person has to do a lot worse, do a lot more with it's as if he has one hand tied behind his back doing the same thing as somebody who got both hands free. You get what I'm saying? Like it's just it's it's a lot it's a lot, man. It's a lot, and and Steve Wilkes. I'm watching the game, and I see, I see, um, Kyle Shanahan, his displeasure with Steve Wilkes. I could see it. I could see it. I'm watching the displeasure he has for Steve Wilkes on the sidelines, bro. And and I knew it was bad, even though. Steve Wilson is calling a great game. Steve Wilson is calling a good game. Even though with all that, I've seen where, and that's the thing, like when somebody is calling the game, it's very, like, it, you got to be careful as a head coach or somebody that's the overseer of somebody that's calling plays and calling a game plan. Like, it's just, it's to a point where Okay, I, I I get it. When it comes to big calls, like a third down call, this and that, and a third. Okay, you 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 put in your two cents. Hey, you know, just heads up. You know, if you, any you know, just an idea or stuff like that. But it's different when somebody's calling a defensive game plan and he's in the zone, trying to figure out ways to stop the opposing offense, and you. He make a call and you call timeout because you don't like the call he made and you snap on him and tell and now you just told him to make choose make another call. So now you've come to get to a point. Now you're micromanaging. Now you're micromanaging the guy. You get what I'm saying? To the point where now, okay, the coordinator, I'm calling the game plan. I'm in the zone. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what to call. I see something, now I make another call. If I'm not mistaken, I think that call that he called, he called timeout and told him to change a different call, I think he was about to go all out blitz. Right? I think he was going to go, I think he was going man, man, man to man with the all out blitz and every, and then everybody would cover their man. And I think he was like, no, we're not doing that. Right? This man been playing safe the whole, and I've seen how he called the game. He was playing safe the whole game just so nobody beat them. Like, so just so just to eliminate any beaters, it, just to eliminate any receiver going downfield, getting a long play, even Ke- including Kelsey. And he was doing a great job with that. A lot of the corners and stuff was playing. He was playing a lot of zone, a lot of off zone, a lot of uh, soft zone. You know, he wasn't bumping. He wasn't all up in. He didn't have the corners. Um, 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 uh, tightly covering the receivers or whatnot. He had them playing back, and he had them playing zone and stuff like that. Then mid- midway through the game, you see he switched to man to man, right? So now when he started to switch, he made that adjustment midway. At the midway point, when he made that adjustment to switch to man to man, he was going to start calling some blitzes, right? He was going to up the ante and. 
and Kyle and Kyle Shanahan stopped him. Like, no, like that's not a good um environment to work in. Like, even if I am doing a great job, like what the freak? Like, I don't, I don't want that. Like, damn, let me call my game plan, bro. I'm trying to help you out. I'm keeping the game close, and you not your offense is not producing any points and stuff like that. So it's like, it's like, man, the man was just like on the rock in a hard place. The coach already don't respect him. Coach Michael managing him in front of everybody on national television. We could all see it. We could all see the man under pressure. And then after all that, you fire the man. Come on, bro. Come on. So, like, I don't get it. Like, that, like he kept the game close. It was you who didn't produce. Like, you made a mistake in, um, what, what was it? You made a mistake in an overtime. One, in my opinion, like, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't even know about those new rules. Like, my mindset was, like, the overtime rule was um, if you kick a field goal, if you kick a field goal, the other team has an opportunity to to to, to get the ball because you kicked the field goal. But if you if you score a touchdown, then that's game, right? That's what I, that was my my thought process. I didn't realize that in the playoffs, they changed the rules to even if you score a touchdown, the other team gets an opportunity. I forgot they instituted that. And I guess everybody else on San Francisco forgot too. So my mindset is like, that's different now. Like, I didn't think, because I wasn't thinking like that when I'm watching the game. My mind says, like, okay, he want the ball. Okay, he want the ball because he want to be aggressive and win the game. But the, when he get the ball, and I'm thinking he's going to be aggressive to try to win the game, right? It's It was um third and four. What was it? Third and four? It was third and four at, like, your five, six yard line. And you kicked the field goal in the Super Bowl with Patrick Mahomes on the sideline, ready to get the ball back to 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 score, ready to in, to, to to score a touchdown. Like, come on, man! The man, no, like you get the ball to Patrick Mahomes. Patrick, Mahomes, like I'm gonna score this touchdown. I don't give a damn if I gotta do it myself. I don't give a damn if I, got, if I gotta run every play. Right. In that situation, I felt like he should have went more. He should, like, I should, I would have went Dan Campbell on him right there, man. I'm, I would have went, man. I'm going Dan Campbell right there, man. Like, I'm going for it, dog. I'm going for the win. It's five yard line. Come on, bro. And it wasn't even like it was third and goal. It was third and four. So if you just got the field goal, if you got the four yards, you could have got another set of downs, and you could have definitely scored the touchdown. Like, I don't. I don't get it, man. Like he sh- that's what that's another mistake. If you're gonna go aggressive, you won the you won the toss. You could have deferred. But you won the toss and you wanted the ball first in the Super Bowl. Right? If you're going aggressive, go all the way aggressive. Right? If you're gonna go and get the ball first. In overtime, in the Super Bowl against Patrick Mahomes, and then you get to the five six yard line, third and four. That's automatic. In my opinion, that's automatic four down territory because you're going aggressive. You're being aggressive, right? You're being aggressive, and once you be that aggressive, you got to go all the way. There's no turning back, and I felt like. His mindset was like, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be aggressive. And then after that, midway point, he said, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have did it. You know what? Fall back. Abort. 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 I think that's what what he did mentally. But it's like, man, you you already went, dog, that was a great drive. Third and four, I'm going for it. It's It's four down territory, man. If I miss it, I miss it. But guess what? There's nobody. It's like, there's a um, term that says leave nothing, leave nothing on left left on the table, like leave everything on the field. 
And I felt like you left plays on the field, dog. And it, it, this comes from me and my football days. Hey, don't leave any leave don't um leave any plays on off the field. Put all leave all the leave all the plays off. Put, like you 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 leave everything on the field. Like don't leave don't come home with anything. Leave everything. Like it's the Super Bowl. Like that's like we going we going all out. If we're gonna go all out, we are going all out. If you're going aggressive, you go all aggressive. You pick you 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 took the ball first in the Super Bowl. You could have deferred, but you went. You had a great drive all the way to your ten to six yard line. And then you hit the field goal. That was, in my opinion, was another turning point to the game. You should have just, it's, that's four down territory right there. Third and four, man, you got McCaffrey. You could have hit a, 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 a hitch, a hitch route while he, he, he get it from the backfield and, and, and try to get a couple more yards. Or you just get it, give it to him straight down the middle. Who knows what happened? Get you two yards. Now it's fourth and two, more manageable situation come on man come on bro cow cow like and then you turn around when the season's over you go and fire steve wilkes like he's like he was the problem come on man you made some mistakes too like and it's crazy that steve wilkes is going through stuff like this dog like like it's crazy like and it's like then you 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 kick the field goal and what you expect, like you start getting, and on top of that is like that's that that like if you had any trepidation with Steve Wilkes throughout the season, throughout the game, you get on him before that exact juncture, not on the last drive of the season. That's when you decide to micro be micromanaging. You start to micromanage him and start to. To mess with his head, you don't do that in the last play, last drive of the season, man. The man is trying to get a stop to give you the ball back, and you start Michael managing, you start messing with his head. It was a wrap after that. You got him second guessing his play call. You got him second guessing his play call, and who knows whatever play he was about to call. Who knows, right? Maybe that call that you stopped him from making, who knows, that probably would have been the, the game changer, man. We will never know. We will never know. Because you stopped the play. If, if it was a big gainer or this and that, then okay. Now you can fairly blame Steve Wilkes. That was, it was, that's a win-win for you. If he messed up and made a boneheaded play, then okay, that's on him. The pressure's off you, Cal. But you didn't even allow him to, to work something, work his magic. Once you started calling timeouts, snapping on the radio, that that fried his brain, man. That 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 messes, like in my opinion, that that right there, man. That 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 messes a play calls rhythm up, man. In my opinion, and I and I and I feel like. I feel like he shouldn't have did that, in my opinion, because you never know what he was gonna call. He probably would have called a, a blitz, a, a timely blitz. You never know. He's trying to get you the ball back, man. Like, and I, I, I just, I just, it, it's just the game was just, um, disappointing all around. And um, but hey. Um, like I said, like you got to give a uh, credit to to uh Patrick Mahomes, Eric Reed, um uh, Andy Reed, um and uh you you gotta you gotta you gotta give you know kudos to and credit to Andy Reed and and, and Patrick Mahomes and the crew and it, it because they they did a great job. I mean, um, I said I always saying Eric Reed most of the. The, the the podcast. I mean, I meant Andy Reid. Um. So, but uh, yeah. So it's like, I don't. Um. That's really, you know, my opinion on that. I just feel like, you know, hey, it was a good game. Um. But those were the the, the turning points that caused. Like it was, 
And it was like, if those things did not happen, it's like, it's like for the, for the, for the Kansas City, it's like, it's like perfect, certain perfect things had to happen for Kansas City to win. And those things happened what, that caused Kansas City to win. It's like, if that, it's just such a, a small margin of errors, man, that if it wasn't for that, like right now, we'd be talking about San Francisco being Super Bowl championships. We'd be talking right now, we'd be talking about Cal Shanahan as a Super Bowl champion. And right now, we'd be talking about Steve Wooks as a Super Bowl winning defensive coordinator, and he probably would have still kept the job. He probably would still had his job today. I mean, you know, people out there saying he probably still would have got fired. But my thing is, like, the the defense was still a, a top 10 defense in my estimation throughout the season. So my mindset is straight up, you just didn't like him. That's how I look at it. You just didn't like him. Like, forget the fact that he's trying to do his job and trying to produce. But that that that, that works against him. Like, it just works against him, the fact that you – did not bond with him, even though he's doing what he's supposed to do, trying to uh, to lead the defense, trying to do something and provide for his family and be the the you know the the man that he he, he upstanding citizen that he like. Come on, man! Like it's it's crazy how relationships and nepotism really you know gets infiltrated into this thing, man. I'm not saying. It, it is that it, it's part of life. It's go. It's always gonna be part of it. But it's like, man, like, my goodness, like, what did he do? Like, is there something that happened behind closed doors that caused Steve Wooks to get these type of get into these type of uh, unfortunate situations? He went to Arizona, a rebuilding team. There was no expectations. He ended up getting a. He had a new quarterback. They ended up being bad again. They had opportunity to get another quarterback, but they didn't stay with Josh Rosen. They after one season they decided, and that's another thing. Like, what happened to when you draft a quarterback in the top ten? You at least give them a couple of years. We gave Ryan Tannehill like five, four years before we started getting critical with him. Like Josh Rosen only had one year, and then after that he was kicked to the curb. Bring in Kyler Murray. And not only you brought in Kyle and Murray, but then you fired Wilkes after one year when there was no expectations. It was supposed to be a rebuilding season. You get what I'm saying? And then he goes to Carolina, and seven games in Carolina, when he gets tabbed as the interim head coach, he turns the team around and have them become have them be a competent um a team. You didn't even give him an opportunity to be retained as the head coach, or at least give him another year. Say, okay, we'll give you one year to be the head coach. Let's see if we can, uh, you know, continue this uh, momentum. Or maybe give him a couple years. You let him go. Then now he ends up with San Francisco as a defensive coordinator, and then he gets fired after reaching the Super Bowl and holding Patrick Mahomes to 13 points in regulation. That's some. That's a raw deal. If, if I if I if I ever knew one, that's that's crazy. Man, shout out to Steve Wilkes, man. Keep your head up, man. You know the, the like I always say, like um uh, uh John uh, John uh Middlecoff always say the cream always rises to the top, and just just look at it that way, man. That you know you you're the cream, and you'll eventually rise to the top, man. And that's how I look at it. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Drew Sports Show, um you know sports podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We'll have, I'll have this. We, um, on all major platforms, this you know, this on Apple, Spotify, and all major platforms. Like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. This do sports show. Good night.